Hi, I'm Dump Truck DS, and welcome back to Mapping for Quake with Trench Broom. This is part four of Entities. If you haven't seen the other versions, I've got a link to the playlist below. Go back to Entities part one and watch it from the beginning because you might be a little lost without it. All right, so we're moving on to some more advanced entities. First of all, trigger counter. Let's say you have something you want to do, you want to trigger some kind of event, whether it's teleporting monsters in or opening a big giant door or what have you. And you want to have a certain number of monsters die before that happens. Or let's say you have three buttons you need to go find all throughout the level. So we're going to get into the logic of this in, in a few minutes, but I wanted to just remind you from the gameplay. First, we have this ogre here that jumps down and attacks, and then you trigger a, the knight and he wakes up. And the knight comes down these stairs at you. So now on the trigger counter, we have this here, count. And the default is count two, so I left it alone. Now, once you kill both of those guys, this trigger counter is fired or triggered. And what I have outside of the map out here is a monster closet. It's just this, um, I'm gonna hide this wall here. This is just an area outside of your map that contains monsters and other entities that you don't want just laying around. We have a couple entities that are being triggered by that trigger counter. One is a trigger relay, and the other one is kind of hidden inside of this uh, wizard here. It's a trigger teleport. So I'm going to now go to a different map here and show you the logic that I have set up here. So it's a little easier to, to kind of digest. So these two monsters are targeting the trigger counter. The target name of the trigger counter is counter one. When this is fired or triggered, it's triggering two entities. There's a trigger relay and a trigger teleport. Both are named target name spawn one. Now in this case, the wizards do have a, a target but we're gonna to get to that in a minute. So for now, I'm gonna hide these guys. And let's just concentrate on what's being triggered. So the trigger teleport is pretty self-explanatory. Once it is triggered, the entity touching it, which in this case is the wizard, will teleport. So the target of this trigger teleport is Tele 3. So let's go to Tele 3. I'm gonna go in here, and that's this guy. We're killing those two monsters. Once that happens, this trigger fires, and triggers a trigger teleport. And this is the destination that the monster will arrive in. I didn't have this wizard teleport in, and I'm gonna show you why. This is a trigger relay. I've named it spawn one, which is the same target name as this trigger teleport. You can have different entities have the same target name so that they do different things when triggered. So what I wanted to do was I wanted this guy to spawn in and then one and a half seconds later, I wanted this guy to spawn in. So I had to give him a trigger teleport. So he's touching that trigger teleport, but this is target name spawn two. The trigger relay allows you to add more triggers to a setup. It's spawn one, it's target is spawn two, which is this a trigger teleport. And the, you know, again, the reason I did this is so that these guys didn't teleport at the exact same time. When monsters teleport in like this, if they pop in all at once, it doesn't look right. And also the, the teleport animation, the little sparkles that come out, the particles that come out, they won't fire uh, because there's too much going on in the game engine. It's just one of those quirks of Quake. So if you put a delay, you'll get one to teleport in, get particles, another to teleport in, you get particles there. So I wanted to show you that. I do want to clarify something, but I don't want to get too confusing here. You can add a delay to a trigger teleport. In fact, many entities, you can add a delay key and have a delay. I think the easiest way to remember this trigger relay business is if you need to trigger two separate target names, that's when you use a trigger relay. I forgot to tell you where this guy teleports to after he is uh, triggered by the trigger relay. Uh, his, his teleport destination is called Tele2, and it's the opposite. I just, I, I wasn't sure where the player was going to be facing, so I put one on one side and one on the other because, um, I, I don't know, just kind of playing a numbers game here. You're not sure where the player is going to be facing once he kills the knight. Now, just one quick note about teleport destinations. If you're spawning in different monsters, each trigger teleport has to have its own info teleport destination. Let's say you try to trigger two monsters into the same teleport destination, they will instantly gib and telefrag. You may want that, but it might make it a little too easy for the player. 
Now getting back to this flowchart view, we have these two wizards and they're actually targeting another counter. So this counter is called WizCT and it's targeting the gold door. So once these two guys are killed, this fires and the do gold doors open. The other thing is there's a message that I have here. Doors are opening. So I delay this by three seconds just to kind of give the player some time to kind of take a breather, maybe grab some health. And then the trigger displays that message when the doors open. Trigger counters can have messages. So if you just use the default, there's a default message that shows up. So if you kill the first monster, and let's say there's two, you kill one monster, it'll say only one more remaining. Kill the second one, it'll say sequence complete. That's the default. If you don't want any messages, which is how I had it with the ogre and the knight and the two scrags, you just select the no message spawn flag. The third way is a custom message. And so you fill in the message key and that will display at the end of all the monsters being killed. In this case, I put dog catcher. So these doors are target name gold door, gold DR. And when they open, they reveal the gold key and a nice little vor waiting for the player. He's not triggering anything. He's just a, a normal monster. Um, I will show you his spawn flag though. Spawn flags, I told you I'd get to these a little more detail. The ambush spawn flag is for monsters and basically what that means is this guy is gonna stay asleep until he sees you. Let's say there was another setup and he was down below and these monsters were spotting you and making noise and shooting at you. He wouldn't be triggered at all because other monsters in the vicinity, when they get triggered and get angry, that will trigger any other monster in the area so they all kind of rush you. But if it's set to ambush in general, unless he sees you, he's not going to attack. While I was editing this piece, I realized I've committed a grave error. And I've been referring to a Shaurath or a Vor as he. Everyone knows that Vors are females, including me. I just wasn't thinking and I apologize from the deepest recesses of my dark heart. So this brings us to the gold key now. This is just a simple class name origin, although you can, just like we did with the nail gun, you could trigger a shambler to spawn in behind you uh, using the setup I showed you earlier. So you have the gold key and now you can open these funk doors here. And I'm gonna hide them because I need to show you how a trigger teleport works. So the class name is trigger teleport. I'm gonna hide this too. When you make a teleporter, the way I do it is I make a small little brush that's about eight units that fits in a frame. You know, teleports can be any shape, any size. They don't even have to look like this at all. You make a brush and then there's a teleport trigger in front of that brush. So that uh, watery kind of swimmy teleport texture is just for show. This is the real business here. So you make a trigger teleport, you make a brush that fits in there. You right click and apply, uh, you know, trigger teleport entity to it. You have to have a target. So Tele1, and there's a line that transports to Tele1 and he's up here. His angle is facing that way, 270. And uh, let's see what else, nothing, really, there's nothing else. I mean, I could change some spawn flags, but there's really no reason to. Now I wanna show you how I constructed this because to me, it's, it's kind of a good little trick to use. When you make your teleport brush, the one that's for show here, the texture name is asterisk teleport. And what that means is it's a liquid and it, it'll transform and kind of animate like a liquid like these other liquids do. When you're using Eric W tools to compile your maps, there's something that you can take advantage of called water skip. I, I call it water and tele skip. I made these uh, beautiful textures. Basically what you do is make the entire brush out of the skip texture and then you select just this face and apply the teleport texture. What that does is if you don't do that and you had the teleport texture on this side, in modern engines, you can see through the water. And so you're gonna see a double vision of the teleport texture. This avoids that. It makes this texture visible from both sides, but only along this normal here. So right now we can't see that, but uh, that's, that's why that is created this way. So let's talk about trigger teleports in a little more detail here now that I've kind of gone over most of the gameplay. So 90% of the time you can just make a trigger, you know, and that one I was showing you a minute ago is just a small thin little trigger and that's fine. But there is a way to make a point entity a trigger teleport. You don't have to do this, but this is how I've started to do it recently. And I don't want to get into the reasons for it, but there's some technical reasons for compatibility with older Quake engines. So I'm I'd be remiss if I didn't show it to you. It's kind of a hack though. So you need to grab what's called an info null. So an info null is something that is used for multiple purposes and it's kind of, uh, you can point lights at it and all do map hacks and things like that. So in this case, we're gonna actually rename it to trigger teleport. 
So now we've got two trigger teleports. One's a brush entity and one's a point entity. Now this guy is a little tricky, but he does work. That's what I used on those wizards in the other part of the map in the monster closet. Let's put a monster in here. Let's go, let's make a zombie. Um, you can put this trigger teleport inside the zombie's bounding box. The only challenge is just kind of selecting things. So, I mean, you can keep it outside until you're finished with it and then just drag it in. So usually you kind of want to go near the center of the monster just to be sure. And to be doubly sure, if you want to make sure, if, if you do this method and then it doesn't work, there's a slight possibility with some monsters that it doesn't work within the bounding box. So there's an easy way to fix that. You click on the zombie, you get his origin, and you just copy, and then I'm gonna control scroll wheel, and I'm gonna make it the exact same origin by pasting it in there. Now it might kind of lower, like some of them lower down really far down, but that's the absolute origin of where the zombie is. So these share the exact origin, and this will absolutely tr uh, teleport this monster out. I wouldn't use these on normal teleporters. I would only use these for monsters teleporting in. The reason being is that this is a small area. You're going to have to intersect this exact area in order to teleport, whereas the brush makes it really easy for a player to kind of, you know, enter into a zone. So you have a big giant exit like we have at the end. You know, there's no way he's going to miss that, but he could miss it if it was this point. So the rule of thumb is if you want to spawn in monsters, this method is absolutely acceptable. So what people normally do is just cover as much of the zombie or the monster as possible, um, making sure that it's going to trigger. In the id map, you'll notice that some of them are little brushes that go like so. You know, as long as you know it works, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. But I'm starting to come around to this method of teleporting monsters in. So we're almost to the end of the map here and you teleport out and hopefully the player knows that this switch is going to let him out of the level. So this is a funk button set to negative two, so it goes down. There's a lip of two, just like I used on the other buttons. There's a weight of negative one, which means it will not reset. And we have a target of exit one, and exit one are these two doors. So that button links to these two funk doors, and we've already gone through that with the gold door, so we're kind of finished with that. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these guys. So our final entity is a trigger change level, and these doors open up. So this is one of the more simple entities there is. Brush entity, trigger change level. As I said before, usually people set the start map. If you had your own mini episode with a bunch of maps, you would name this to your next map. I said that was the last entity, but this is actually the last entity. The info intermission. And as you can see, it's a point entity. You just, I just search for INT and it shows up. You drag it into the map. This one's a little tricky. You're going to need to have paper and pencil out to kind of make the most of this and just jot down a few numbers. So I'm going to show you these numbers in advance here. So under origin, we have the location in 3D space inside the map that this guy lives, right? So it's negative 279, 155, blah, blah, blah. Now this key right here is called M angle or mangle. And what this does is it points the camera in the direction we need to be looking at. So this is something that we're gonna have to go into the game and I'm gonna show you the commands that you need to use in order to determine what that angle is. Okay, let's, I'm gonna do uh, no target and I'm gonna no clip. No target will make sure that the monsters are not gonna attack you and then no clip allows you to fly around. I hope you know those commands already, but if you don't, now you do. Okay, so we found this point of view. We like this. We're going to use this as our M angle. Now you can have more than one intermission camera, but they'll just randomly kind of load up. So I usually just do one, but I've done multiple ones. It's, I don't know, it's kind of a random thing, but you always want to put one in because it's a great way, a great cinematic way. And just remember, there's going to be text on the screen in front of you. So you've got to allow for that. You may want to kind of have it kind of more interesting items on the, on the sides. Um, and then the, you know, as you can kind of imagine the text in the middle of the screen there. So the way you get the M angle is by a console command called view position. So you type in view POS. I'm using Mark V as my engine to test this map. And you can see it gives you actually two positions. Let's just choose camera because that's going to be your point of view here. So now your origin is the first set of numbers. We're looking at camera here. So I'm going to jot down 648, 1094, 308. So that's our um, so that's our origin, and then our M angle is 26, 181, and zero, and that last number is always going to be zero. So we'll go back to the editor, and what I'll do is I'll I'll make a new one. I'm just going to control drag this out to make a copy. I'm going to type in the origin. It is six four eight space ten ninety four three zero eight. 
26, 181, zero. Now that uh, intermission camera is where we left it and it's aiming right down where we, it's using the M angle to point the camera in the direction we wanted. So I'm gonna no clip, I'm just gonna cheat here and no clip into this. Make sure I'm not in the, turn off no clip. So now, cool. <laughs> For some reason it, we triggered it. I don't know why, that's funny. All right, I know that was a ton of information, but we're basically finished with the kind of the first swing at entities. Uh, we went over a lot of the real common things that you're gonna be putting into your maps. There's tons more. There's so many more things that you can do with Quake, uh, but these are the kind of broad strokes and you now should be able to have all kinds of cool things in it. We didn't cover like crushers and traps and things like that. We'll go ahead and do that in another tutorial sometime later. Thank you so much for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next tutorial.